It gives me great pleasure to address this year's Afghanistan Week, my first address on this occasion as Afghanistan's ambassador to Norway. Each year, this initiative brings together journalists, political figures, academics, and activists from Afghanistan, Norway, and beyond to discuss important issues related to Afghanistan's politics, society, and culture. I wish to start by thanking the Norwegian Afghanistan Committee for its important contribution of humanitarian support for Afghanistan. For more than two decades now, the Afghanistan Committee has been working on projects and initiatives in some of the most rural parts of the country in the areas of education, environment, health, and rural development. These programs have helped bring tangible improvement in the lives of our citizens, especially women, girls, and other vulnerable groups. The committee is one among several Norwegian NGOs that symbolize the historic friendship, solidarity, and partnership of Norway and its people with Afghanistan. This solidarity and support extends decades prior to the international community's joint and new engagement for stability and prosperity in Afghanistan in 2001. The support of the Afghanistan Committee and other partners, such as the Norwegian Refugee Council, the Norwegian Church Aid, Norwegian Red Cross, are still fresh in the minds of a now older generation that has placed confidence in Afghanistan's emerging dynamic youth to take responsibility for the country's future. And in the broader context, the committee's work is part of Norway's wide-ranging contributions, which span the areas of security, development, democratization, and the rule of law, women's empowerment, among other areas. We place high value in our bilateral relations and cooperation with Norway, which have grown and evolved into a strategic partnership. And today, our cooperation and partnership continues to deepen and expand. Norway's contributions are an important part of Afghanistan's main achievements over the past two decades. The emergence of a dynamic new generation of Afghans impacting social, cultural, and political change as public servants, civil society, and media. Consolidation of democratic values and principles in not only the main cities, but also the most remote parts of the country a wide network of independent media sector that continues to grow, with over 100 television stations and hundreds of newspapers and online platforms recognized as the most open and independent in the entire region. Afghanistan is steadily reclaiming its traditional role as a hub for cross-regional trade, connectivity, and economic cooperation. Amidst the difficult security environment of increased terrorist attacks, we tend to often lose sight of these gains. But these achievements are real, foundational, and the very source of our people's confidence in being able to overcome the difficult challenges that still remain. This year's Afghanistan Week comes at a time of both opportunity and challenges in the context of our peace efforts. Opportunity because after a very long time, direct negotiations between the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan and the Taliban have begun. This was made possible by persistent and intensified efforts by the government, by our people, and also our international partners in the past two years. Most recently, in another display of compromise and flexibility, which is indeed needed in any peace endeavor, the Afghan people and government decided on the release of more than 5,000 Taliban prisoners to bring about a more positive environment for peace talks to move forward in the right direction. Of course, that decision came with an expectation that the gesture of goodwill would be reciprocated by a ceasefire, an end to violence that has plagued the country for more than 40 years, and assuring our people that the sacrifice they made in looking beyond the past and into a new future would be acknowledged, respected, and taken to heart. Unfortunately, for the moment, there has been no change. Terrorist attacks continue, and the cries and pain of the families who have lost their loved ones is felt and heard by all Afghans in the country, and also by the millions of Afghans living abroad who share the same desire for peace to return to their home country. The most urgent need at the moment is an immediate ceasefire to spare the people from violence and to prevent erosion of public confidence and support for the peace process. After all, our people are the main stakeholders and their trust and confidence in the process is of vital importance. We're also thankful to all international partners from near and afar who are supporting our efforts for peace. 
as ambassador of Afghanistan here in Oslo, I convey our deepest gratitude to the Kingdom of Norway, one of our closest partners, whose support for peace in our country is part of a wide range of contributions for Afghanistan. On this occasion, we again remember the millions of Afghans who lost their precious lives in the course of the four decades conflict. Those who made the ultimate sacrifice for the liberty of their nation from occupation during the 1980s, and those who perished from conflict and terrorism in the next three decades. We pay a special tribute to the victims of all recent attacks, including those on the Kausara Educational Center in Kabul, Kabul University, and two of our dedicated journalists. Those who perished were striving for success to help secure the future of their country. Their loss will strengthen, not undermine or weaken, the resolve and commitment of our youth. This will be reflected in the participation of some talented members of civil society, the media, and academia in the seminars to be held in the coming days on various topics. Looking ahead, we will continue to engage in the peace process with hope and confidence that any outcome meets the demands and expectation of the people. This will be fundamental for the sustainability and durability of any potential agreement to be reached. At the same time, just as important it will be to reach an agreement, it's equally and in some ways even more important to sustain and keep the peace and avoid any relapse to conflict. For this, the government has begun preparations for the post peace phase, in which the focus will be advancing a four-year development agenda to build and nurture the peace we hope to achieve so that it is socialized, starting from the grassroots level and up, and grows deep roots in society. The new development agenda, in the form of ANPDF2, will be presented next week at the International Geneva Conference to our international partners. The new strategy will be the main framework to make headway in transitioning from an aid-dependent economy to one of self-reliance in a peaceful Afghanistan. Of course, achieving this objective will certainly not be without any challenge. Yet, it is achievable. But success will hinge on several factors. First and foremost, achieving a dignified and lasting peace with proper international guarantees to be implemented within specific joint national and international mechanisms. To this end, an immediate enforcement of a Taliban ceasefire is of crucial importance. Second, maintaining and strengthening the spirit of regional and international consensus on the imperative of peace, which has reached new heights as of late, resulting from consistent efforts in Afghanistan and beyond. Third, continued international partnership and support for Afghanistan in the new phase of cooperation, with special focus on implementing priorities under the new National Peace and Development Framework. Fourth, increased regional and international focus on support to complete the many national and regional infrastructure projects to enhance Afghanistan's central role as a hub for regional trade, transit, and connectivity. These initiatives will, in the immediate and long term, spur economic opportunities which are needed to help keep, reinforce, and sustain peace. And fifth, reasserting Afghanistan's standing as a platform of international cooperation and solidarity in the global stage, whereby all countries again acknowledge the fact that a stable and prosperous Afghanistan is mutually beneficial and will translate into stability and prosperity worldwide. Afghanistan will continue to advance our foreign policy of cooperation and cordiality with all countries, near and afar. I will conclude by saying that despite the very obvious challenges that Afghanistan still faces, we are confident about our ultimate success. The Afghan people have always risen to overcome the most difficult of challenges throughout their country's history. Moreover, this confidence is also based on the enduring support of our international partners in the way forward, emanating from the reality that a peaceful and stable Afghanistan is still very much needed for global peace and security. I thank you and wish you all a very successful Afghanistan week.